Julie Daubigny was many things. Notorious duelist, seducer of nuns, cross-dresser who left a string of broken hearts and bitter enemies across Europe, and if none of that interests you, I'm not sure why you're reading this book. Born in 1673 in France, we're not entirely sure Julie is her real name. All we know for sure is her stage name, La Maupin. But she was often credited as Julie in cast lists when she became a singing sensation, and Julie Daubigny is the name she is most commonly known by today. Her mom was out of the picture at an early age, and her dad, a vice-riddled rogue who trained royal pages for the French court, seemed to really wish his darling little girl were a darling little boy, because he trained her alongside them in swordsmanship, writing, hunting, and all those other manly man activities of the 17th century. This unorthodox education might explain Julie's early predilection for wearing boys' clothes, waving swords about, and getting to know gentlemen, often in the biblical sense. In the tradition of centuries of protective fathers, Julie's dad had a habit of dueling any man ballsy enough to court his daughter. When she realized she'd have to take on some creative problem-solving if she ever wanted to get laid, Julie shacked up with the only dude her father couldn't get away with dueling, his boss. Which was when her dad decided they should probably get her married. Julie, however, decided probably no. When an engagement was arranged between Miss Julie and a milk toast royal clerk, Julie let everyone know exactly how she felt about it by running away to become a performing fencer. As a teenage fencing prodigy, Julie traveled France with a rascally swordsman who became both her lover and business partner, performing demonstrations with the sword to crowds that went nuts for this skinny girl who could sling foils with the brawniest of men. Those years of page boy training had made Julie so good that during one demonstration, a sexist douchebag in the audience voiced doubt she was really a woman, because ladies can't fight that well. So, Julie flashed him her boobs, while dueling, which was proof enough. But Julie had a short attention span when it came to everything, and she soon grew tired of her swordsman lover especially when she caught the eye of a local merchant's pretty blonde daughter. Upon discovering their kid was queer as a $3 bill, the girl's parents decided the best thing to do was separate her from Julie by getting her to a nunnery. No problem for Julie. She took the veil, too. Together, they had secret nun liaisons in the house of God, and when they were discovered, they took the body of a newly deceased nun she died of natural causes, don't worry. Julie is many wicked things, but she's not a nun murderer. Hid it in her bed to cover their escape and burned their convent down on their way out the door. And this was all before she turned 20. Alas, after three months of blissful post-convent elopement, Julie was bored again and left her girlfriend for a new mistress, the theater. Julie became an opera superstar in France under the stage name Mademoiselle Maupin. Audiences went wild for Julie, both because she had a unique voice, one of the first and only contraltos on stage at the time, and because she had the sort of personal life the 1700s tabloids would have eaten up. Julie's hobbies included singing, gambling, seducing men, seducing women, seducing women while dressed as a man, and dueling men who tried to stop her. In spite of dueling being illegal in France, Julie was notorious for going out of her way to pick fights with anyone who looked at her wrong. When a gentleman in her opera company was being a misogynistic creep toward women backstage, Julie doled out some vigilante justice. She followed him home after a rehearsal, beat him in the street with a cane, and stole his watch. <laughs> 